Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about some of my top tips for computer, phone, and cybersecurity for students. I'm going to be going over a lot of technical do's and don'ts in this video. And some of the things I recommend will be easier than others. I'll try to be upfront with some of my tips and tell you which ones I personally use and which ones are best practice, but a little harder to actually follow through on. And not all of these prevent hacking. Some of them are just general computer and internet security tips for students. And this is far from a comprehensive list. I've tried to condense this down to things that students can do on their own for free, so I've avoided recommending specific subscription services or hardware that costs money. If you or your family can afford things like VPN, subscription, password managers, special hardware, go for it. Remember, this video won't mention everything and the world of cybersecurity is constantly changing, so there may be many more important tips in the future. This video is gonna go above and beyond the, the basic cybersecurity tips like be careful on public Wi-Fi, don't share your password, don't send money to random people who claim you're the last living relative of some foreign prince. <laughs> But if you're not already following those recommendations, make sure you are. I wanna go a little bit deeper in this video. So let's start with passwords. Obviously, it is best practice to not share your passwords, even with your best friend. It's not a good idea even to show how much you trust somebody to share your passwords with them. And also remember to change them from the default setting if your school gives you a default password. If you don't, this makes it really easy for somebody to guess your credentials and log into your accounts. I know it's annoying, but it is a good idea to turn on two-factor authentication for most of your accounts. I've resisted this for a long time, but it is something I do with, with most of my accounts these days. It is a good idea to have strong passwords as well, something that you can remember, especially if you're not using something like a password manager. So what makes a strong password? Well, make sure it's something that doesn't show up on the top most commonly used passwords. In 2022, cybernews.com listed these as the most common passwords that people use. A lot of people can easily try these to get into your accounts. And so if one of these is your passwords for any of your devices or accounts, you probably wanna change it. You definitely don't wanna be like Kanye West in his famous clip from the White House where he was caught using the password 00000 to unlock his phone. Hopefully he's changed it since then. If you wanna use a password manager, there's a lot out there, but a lot of them do cost money. There are free password managers and Google Chrome even offers a password managing feature if you want to use that, but it is a good idea to change up your passwords frequently and to make sure if any of your accounts have been compromised to definitely change the passwords that are associated with those. So let's say you're good with the password stuff. It's a good idea to frequently do a personal check on your own security. So log into Facebook or Instagram or other apps that you typically use and see where login activities have happened. On Instagram, go to settings, then security, then login activity, and you can see where people have logged into your account. Hopefully it's just locations that you have been using your account in. Next up, use a safe browser choice if you can. What does this mean? This is a browser that can't be easily compromised, something that might have built-in ad blockers, declines cookies automatically, and upgrade sites with more secure encryption features if they can. I haven't used it myself, but the browser Brave is highly recommended in some cybersecurity circles. Firefox is another very popular one for cybersecurity features. Google Chrome is okay, and usually it stays pretty up to date with security features, but you definitely wanna make sure you update Chrome whenever you can, and just be aware that a lot of your browsing is information that's collected for Google if you're doing it over Google Chrome. And speaking of updates, update your stuff. This goes for ad blockers, apps, browsers, antivirus software, anything really. Software updates are gonna fix bugs and known holes with security vulnerabilities. So the longer you go without updating your stuff, the more likely it is that your information could be compromised if there's a bug or a feature that is gonna allow people in. So keep out the hackers and update your stuff. When you're browsing the internet, you wanna be aware of the URLs that you're going to. If you've never noticed this before, a usual URL may start with HTTP or HTTPS. HTTPS has encryption on it, so it's a better idea to visit sites with, with HTTPS instead of just HTTP. This does not guarantee that the website will be totally safe, but it is a better idea to go to websites with HTTPS because the site owner is, is using secure encryption features that make it more difficult for hackers to get in. So this could come in handy when you're doing research, browsing the internet, or even playing games in class. Just double check that URL and see where you're going. If you're going to a website that's not HTTPS and it's for class, ask your teacher if there's any alternatives or if they've check the website security features before you access it. Now it's time to talk about phishing. 
you've probably seen email or text scams if you've spent any time on the internet these days. What are some best practices to not get caught in some sort of scam? One, avoid clicking on random links, especially if it's a link from somebody random in a chat or a discord or in an email that you're not quite sure about. If you get an email and you're not sure if it's legit, make sure you check to make sure it's an address from your domain, from your school or organization. If it's something that doesn't seem quite right, for example, user at youtubeinfo.com instead of just youtube.com, this could be a scam. Watch out for poor grammar and spelling in the email. And if you're not sure or if something doesn't make sense and you're not sure if it's a real email, just go ahead and forward it to admin or the IT people or teachers at your school, and they can check to see if it's real. Don't click on links, reply to it, or even open the message if you think it's suspicious. The same goes for text. Don't reply to any scam text. Don't even reply stop if they give you the option. This tells the people on the other end that you are a live person and that you are replying to their messages. Don't release any info and obviously do not click on any links. If you can, block the number on your phone, both iPhones and Androids can do this. It becomes annoying and they keep messaging you. You can go ahead and report it to your your cell phone carrier or repeated offenders. Let's do a few more tips to prevent hacks and keep you safe online. Be very careful about the videos and photos that you are posting online of yourself or of others. Using social media, it is best practice to keep your accounts private. I know this is not always the case. For example, my Twitter profile is public, my YouTube account is public, but my other social media accounts are private. As you're posting things, pay attention to what's in the background. Are you showcasing any addresses, any license plates, any specific identifying information? Or talking about people's names, showing people's faces, talking about important life information that could relate back to security questions that you've answered for a website? You never wanna give up any of this information to somebody who's asking for it online that you don't know. In general, it is best practice to cover your webcam if you're not using it. You can also check your computer or phone to see which apps are using your camera or microphone at any given time. As far as emails, and accounts go, it's a good idea to separate as much of your activity as possible into different accounts. So try to separate your school and your work stuff from your personal browsing stuff. If you use the same account for everything, it makes you very easy to track and opens up everything to vulnerability if there is a breach. Separate activities, you can use separate emails, separate browsers even if you wanna go that far. Now let's talk about incognito mode. Some of you may think that going incognito on Google Chrome, for example, is gonna prevent anybody from tracking any of your information or internet browsing history. It's not a free pass to go visit or do anything on the internet and it will not necessarily keep you safe either. On a local device level, it does keep your browsing history hidden, but on a network level, so say the IT people at your school or your internet service provider or even the government could follow what you're doing on an incognito account. After all of these tips, this is not everything that will keep you safe online, but it is a good place to start. The important part is to not behave recklessly with your devices and your account. The whole everyone gets hacked eventually mentality is not a good one to follow and the earlier your information and data are compromised, the more likely it is to happen again. This is true for organizations and individuals. What other cybersecurity tips do you think are important for students and schools to know? What questions do you have about keeping your accounts and devices safe? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to give this video a like if it's been helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.